course, played right here at St. John's, uh, along with the entire Clues family, all his brothers, Hank and Greg and Kevin, and their sister Mary Ann did not. But the Clues family, strong, strong ties to St. John's University, and it's always good for Timmy. Timmy Clues says, man, it's like coming home. Not only did I play here, but I spent my whole life here watching my brothers. He's the youngest of the brothers, you know, the four brothers, so he always was here watching his older brothers play basketball, and he loves to walk in the building. It'll be Tyson Johnson in blue wearing number 20 for St. Mary's. will take the opening tip along with Saquon Stone wearing number 14 in white for Zavarian. We'll set numbers and help you adjust to who is who out on the floor. This is Gil Montalvo. He wears number 55. He's a junior guard, just 5'9", out of the uh, sick bed. Has... Uh, been ill for a good portion of a week, but well enough to play today, and that certainly is good news for St. Mary's. Good collapse there on defense by Zavarian. We're going to have to double team Danny Green down low. You, know, you cannot let him dictate scoring and distributing the basketball. He's a special player. 23 is LeVance Fields, has scored 30 or more points in his last four games. Now Jake Stevens, and they go around the horn. Down low it goes for Stone. Flips it outside to number five, Tim Hepworth. Good ball movement at this point. Stone inside, a little reverse look. And Saquon, 6'6", senior. 12 points, eight rebounds, getting some looks by Fairfield and LaSalle. Quick basket down the other way by Tyrone Hansen, tying things at two. Here's Stevens. One of the two captains on the team. Quick shot won't go, and the rebound taken down by Danny Green. It's six foot five, headed to North Carolina. Oh, the spin move doesn't go for the Gales as Tyson Johnson comes up just short. Zone look here in the early going for St. Mary's. Montalvo tries to shut off the lane. Long-range jumper by Stevens doesn't go. Tipped around and grabbed by Brian McKenzie, number 32. One of the many defenses St. Mary's will show you during the course of a game, and Green will pick up his first foul. Well, they're going to call on Tyson Johnson. It is going to be Johnson. It's going to be on Johnson instead. That's his first. And the first on the team, so Stone... Saquon Stone will be at the line shooting two, a three-year starter, averaging 12 points per game. Yeah, Stone been forced into a big man's role, even though 6'6", you say, man, big man, but coming into this year, they had the 6'10 All-American Mike Davis and 6'8 Lou Bradley, but those guys were released for disciplinary reasons, so Coach and Zavarian said goodbye to a couple of Americans, which is refreshing when they didn't hold themselves up to the standards of the program. Stone making one of two. Severian with the 3-2 lead. Now Green for three. And the rebound into the corner. But stepping out of bounds is Zavarian's Fields. And so the ball will go to St. Mary's. See Fields, that stocky build. Wants to push the ball. Just a tough, tough player. Fearless going to the rim. Down low, green, good quick spin move. Now the pass, and the easy basket. Oh, it won't go. I thought it was going to fall, it bounces out. Off the turnover, Gale's looking to break. Johnson in the lane for Elite Pauline. And now the ball out of bounds, and it will remain St. Mary's basketball. It's good play by that Pauline with the transition defense. He originally tipped the ball, so they'll get a possession out of it. Green double team, good defensive help on the play by Fields. And Jake Stevens comes out of it with the ball. Stone with Duck under. And Green with the rebound. Team's a little cold in the early going, Jimmy. Yeah, they're getting used to the rims here. That corner second. Oh, wow, stepping out there. Tyrone Hansen at 6'6. Savage in 12 a game, showing some range. Hansen with the three has all five of St. Mary's points. Quick counter by Zavarian. 
First of the game, Levance. Levance fields for three. And the Clippers regain the lead, 6-5. to five. Really worked on his outside shooting and it's shown all year long. Stone with the rebound. Clippers looking to run. Fields has it taken away by Pauline. Ali Pauline, the 6'1 senior, fouled as he drives. Found the shots to Saquon Stone. That's his first. Saquon Stone called for his first. That is the first on Zavarian. 4.44 to go in the first quarter. Zavarian leading 6-5. St. Mary's from Manhasset, Long Island with the ball. Green setting up inside. Montavo quick around to Pauline. Three-point shot by Tyson Johnson, and so the outside look going for St. Mary's as they lead 8-6. Yeah, Tyson really puts up some numbers, 16 points, five assists, and five rebounds. He's made a commitment to Monmouth, as has his teammate Tyrone Hansen. Fields watched by Montalvo. Now Hetworth, good outside shooter, way off. Now tipped away and coming the other way is Fields. Little helter skelter action. Fields is fouled on the drive. Bodies fly everywhere and the foul is going to be called on Montalvo. Man, you see Levance in transition. Danny Green into your picture. And Montalvo didn't get there in time. Call for the block. 8 6, St. Mary's the lead by two with 3.46 to go in the first. At 6 and 11 on MSG Network. Zaverian will inbound the basketball. Tim Hetworth, number five, a 6 1 senior, will inbound. St. Mary's on defense, but with the two point lead. This is Levance Fields, number 23, gets a screen. Now McKenzie with the long-range jumper off the iron and the rebound taken down by Tyrone Hansen. Looking to run to St. Mary's. Here's Danny Green in transition. Good look down low for Pauline. But he can't buy the chippy. Yeah, Danny Green's had a couple good passes where he did not get the assist without a finish on the other end. Oh. Hepworth was hurt on that play as the shot was blocked. Green had the block, now has the ball down low and is fouled. And Hepworth injured his left shoulder on the play. And Danny Green running the floor to Hepworth. This has got an easy chippy here, but you see Danny Green into your picture. And good recovery by Green hustling down the floor. Hepworth will come out now. Israel Jake Stevens, number 24, Chris Lowry coming in, along with number one, Zamal Nixon. Hepworth saying, come on, wasn't that goaltending? Didn't the ball hit the backboard? Where'd that guy come from, number 14? Another three try by Tyrone Hansen. He has two threes, eight points overall, and the Gales lead by five. Yeah, this was make St. Mary's so dangerous. Danny Green doesn't even have to score for this club. We've got guys like Hansen and Johnson who can really step out. That's the balance we were talking about that Bob Semino, the Mount Vernon coach, uh, was so much impressed by of the St. Mary's team. Over the top is Lowry, follows it up and is fouled. Chris Lowry's got some hops without question. Uh, he's the best leaper on the floor, big time track participant as a variant. He's a high jump champion. He's the most athletic kid in the league and watch the elevation here by Lowry. And he's got God given ability to elevate and he showed it to you right there. They want to get Chris Lowry out on the break the and defend. And Lowry will now go to the free throw line on a couple. Rashad Green, the younger brother of Danny Green, comes into the ball game for the Gales. This is Rashad Green. He's been hurt for most of the season, just recently returning to the lineup, brother, the brother for the basket. 
Well, you see Danny Green, man. He says, you know what? A couple passes of mine didn't. There was no finish on the other one. Let me take this one to the rack and get a deuce on the board. And that's just what he did. Strong move to the left hand by Danny Green. Rashad Green has come into the game for Tyson Johnson, who has two personal fouls. Fields for three. And a rebound to Montalvo. Good weak side rebound by the smallest player on the floor. Rashad Green's left-handed jumper is rebounded by Fields. Fields gets around his man, leading the charge. Jamal Nixon for three way off. Stone inside, and he'll go to the line for two. Saw the Clippers beating the gals down the floor that time, creating a second opportunity. And the reason why you get a full ride to North Carolina, one of the premier universities for basketball, moves like this. Look at how strong. Beats the first guy, takes the contact from the second, and still finishes it ultra smooth. So Saquon Stone at the line for two. The foul called on Danny Green, his first, fourth on the team. 1.43 to go here in the first quarter. St. Mary's leading 13 to six. Stone, one of two. Now two of four from the line overall with four points this evening. Green guarded by McKenzie. Now, Malik Pauline with the ball out between the circles for Montalvo. Montalvo just 5'9", a junior. Green with the rebound and a foul before the shot. So you see Danny averaging double digits and rebounds, averaging a double double for the year. And you see him a good seal off on the offensive end, puts him himself in an outstanding position. A little quickness on the jump. Probably could have done without the dribble, but nevertheless. Lowry high for the rebound as we return to action. 110 to go in the first quarter. Zavarian with the ball, trailing by six. Matt Lachlan, Jimmy Cavallo, and Gene Golda on hand here at Carnesecca Arena on the campus of St. John's. Glad you could join us on this Sunday evening. Final Sunday of the month of January. Green, Danny Green with the rebound. And he's tied up. And the possession arrow favors Zavarian. A little pesky play there by Zamal Nixon. You know, Danny Green's looking up floor. Matt is looking to get out with an alley pass and get the gas running. And Nixon just kind of snuck in there. St. Mary's on an 8-1 run over the last four minutes to take this six-point lead. Nixon triggers the inbound. The sophomore gets it to Stone. And now here's Fields. Rashad Green guarding him. Nixon is open. The lefty jumper hits the front of the rim. And on the rebound, Rashad Green is fouled by LeVance Fields. Yeah, LeVance knows better than that. He's even a little frustrated. Coach Lucy knows can't afford to see LeVance Fields pick up any unnecessary fouls. He had no chance for that ball. Fields headed to Pittsburgh next year. Has three points in this first quarter. Again, four straight 30-point or better games for LeVance Fields. Here's Pauline, wide open, off the back iron. Fields with the rebound. LeVance Fields knows he has the burden to score for this club. And sometimes that burden can hurt this Clipper team. They become overly reliable on LeVance. Most a tough double overtime game. Coming into this one on Friday night to Holy Cross. McKenzie for three. Rebound to Pauline. And time will expire. So one quarter complete here at Carnesecca Arena. St. Mary's Gales looking for their 15th consecutive victory to start the season. They have a six-point lead after eight minutes of play over the Clippers of Zavarian. About that one. Good game. Hall pulled it out of victory. They needed it in the Big East. But uh, St. John's has clearly gotten the ship straightened out and headed in the right direction. Norm Roberts, who uh, has been here most of the day. I'm sure he's here somewhere right now. I just couldn't find him during the break. Uh, he has done a terrific job. Gil Montalvo opens up the scoring in the second quarter with the three-point shot. So now four three-pointers for St. Mary's. And they open up their biggest lead of the ball game at nine points, 16 to seven. 
And off the miss, we have a foul called on LeVance Field. And that'll be his second, the fifth on Zaverian. And Fields wants to take a seat on the bench. Tim Hepworth will return. Hepworth shaken up uh, when a shot of his was blocked in the first quarter. Was uh, motioning that his left shoulder was bothering him. Fields on the bench now, having scored three points. And Hepworth guarding Alik Colleen. Danny Green from long range doesn't get the soft bounce. And the rebound goes out of bounds, and the ball goes over to Zavarian. And this is where Zavarian really has got to pick it up. A couple guys on the floor got to realize now their guy, Vance Fields, is on the bench and will be for a while here. Chris Lowry, number 24. Now Jake Stevens with the number 11 who's back in the game. Lowry with the baseline drive. The floater won't go. But a foul on the rebound try. Tyrone Hansen picks up the foul. His first and the fifth on St. Mary's. Jack Alisi looking on his team down by nine. Make that seven as Saquon Stone has six. Saquon heart and soul with his club. Plays five positions. Does him back down. Blocking foul called on the drive by Tyrone Hansen. And the basket goes. Yeah, check it out once again. The old school continuation here. Doesn't have the spot. Hansen finishes. Hansen showing a good handle. Now it's six foot six. Shooting guard out of Valley Stream, averaging 12 points a game. He's also committed to Mammoth. So Johnson and Hansen. The same there as Mammoth connection. Glad we pumped up if you're Mammoth. The two players of that caliber. Jack Elise goes to the bench. Glenn Richburg, number 40, a 6'1", 215-pound junior, comes into the ball game. Scramble. And the jam. Tyler Hansen's having some ball game. He's got 12 points. 12 of St. Mary's 20. And while all eyes have been on Danny Green, understandably, given the fact that he's headed to North Carolina, it has been his fellow senior headed to Monmouth, Tyrone Hansen, who stepped it up big time as we get a timeout called by Zavarian. The pressure causing some problems, and Jack Alisi wants to talk it over. It's the state of St. Mary's basketball. Little transition defense turns into offense. And you see them going to the floor. Yeah, Hansen finished it, but there was the pressure defense. Now, uh, Rashad Green and company, that calls the turnover. And it seems like St. Mary's, they want to pressure you into mistakes. Defense has been a tradition here. They're always changing it up, trying to cause you confusion. They'll show you a little bit of everything. Zone presses, man-to-man, -man, matchup zones. They help, they recover. It's just great coaching, and it's what they're all about. Well, the message apparently has also gotten through to Tyrone Hanson, the me message delivered by uh, Tim Cruz to media when we were talking about this game and my guess is we also let Tyrone know he says I need you to be more aggressive and he has shown that aggression tonight 12 points for Hansen 5 rebounds that is his average and 12 points is his average for the season so he has matched that with 6.25 to go in the first half This is Hepworth, now Stevens, number 11. Good student with the drive, has his pass knocked away. Danny Green will lead the break. Driving on Hepworth, falling away from the basket. Rebound by his brother Rashad. He goes up with the left-handed shot. And now it's Stone with the rebound. Check that Lowry. Up ahead it goes for Saquon Stone. Oh, the crossover in the way in. Yeah, what a beautiful tuck under there. Feeling the heat of Green bearing down on him. And Stone still got it off. And now the ball thrown away by St. Mary's. Stone with eight of Zavarian's 11 points. The Clippers trailing by nine. And then Saquon, you see Zamal Nixon check back in. Zamal, good outside shooter for this Clipper club. So they're going to need to find offense from a couple different sources with the top gun, the Vance Fields on the bench. He has two fouls and just three points. Hepworth straightaway bomb, no. Have to 
Oh man, Lowry can get up, no question about it. A couple of opportunities that go by the board. Good run by Montavo. First attempt knocked away, and Gerard Fitz, who is coming off the bench, scores his first basket. Yeah, we're talking a lot about Danny Green and you know the Hansons and Johnsons, but Gil Montalvo, uh, most nights mad, is the guy that really puts the whole thing in motion. You know, for Tim Bruce and the Gales of St. Mary's, you know, the little scrappy 5'9 point guard running the show, 10 points and 5 assists, but very smart, gets everybody involved, and every coach like Tim Bruce has that one of those little coaches on the floor, that guy's number 55, Montalvo. Lance Field, uh, Lavance Fields, rather, back in the game. This is the layup and then the foul. Called as Saquon Stone has been a force on the board so far for Zaverian. The foul is charged to Gerard Fitz from St. Mary's. And this is where now if you're Lavance Fields, Matt, you have to find a way to play the next 5-10 without picking up number three. But Jack Alisi knew that the way the game was getting away from the Clippers, he had to put him back in. Mindful of the fact that he had the two personals. Stone, good on both from the free throw line. 22-12 our score, 5.04 to go in the first half. And check that, 22-13 the score. Montalvo's pass. Tough one to make, intercepted by Stone. Stone goes with the left hand, no. Stone has it knocked away and out of bounds, and the ball remains with Severia. There's Montalvo, the coach on the floor type. Why are the, the smaller kids always called the coach on the floor? <laughs> You got look at the six eleven guys aren't called the, the coach on the floor. It's the five nine kids. <laughs> There's Fields for three, no. And Montavo bothered him there by extending the defense. Important time here for Zaverian. They gotta make some shots and hang in here. Nixon's three, no. Ball loose on the floor. And it's Rashad Green. Green a little out of control. Hanson shot, no. Tapped around. And finally comes down to Nixon. 4.20 to go in the first half. Got a lot of 6-6 six, six bodies in there. Jumping up, keeping it alive. Creating more opportunities. Severian working the perimeter. Nixon probing and penetrating. And a shot knocked away. And Ty Hansen that time. Could have nothing of it. 6'6". Six six. There's Nixon to check out. The sophomore Nixon going to the bench. Some words from Jack Alisi. Jake Stevens back in the game. He's got the ball. Fields was open for a moment. Now back pedals and drains it. That was Levance Fields. Five points now for Levance Fields. Silent, silent. A little step back jumper right there. With the left hand, nothing but net for Rashad Green, a three-pointer for Green. Savannah made that too easy that time on St. Mary's. Matt can't let the team get away with one of those lolly pop passes across the defense. Five three-pointers for St. Mary's for Reeds by ten. It's a great day for basketball. We had seven games, in. unbelievable. But for Scotty, what do you mean ten cents? <laughs> a lot of great talent this Tri-State area. And Coach, I just want to know what it's like to have an arena named after you. I'll let you know. It's <laughs> just a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it's a, I guess I spent you know, the day of my life on this court. And to have it, it's, it's wonderful. And I think of all the great players, great coaches, great games. And to be remembered in that vein is, makes me feel good. Thanks for your time. The legend, Coach Lou Karn, the second guy's back to you. All right, Gene, thanks. Always good to hear from the coach. Down! End of the quarter's Gerard Fitz. End to end, coast to coast run for the champ. He's got four. And it's 10 points once again, the St. Mary's lead. Fitz just exploding there ahead of the pack. Well, Vance Fields with the floater. He's got four in this quarter, seven overall. And you see Vance only six feet in there. Battling tough. The three. 
comes out to Fitz, finds Rashad Green, tries to go to his brother, it's intercepted by Stone. They've tried that pass a number of times, different players each time, and it's been picked off each time. Look out here, Hanson, throw away it. 14 points now for Tyrone Hanson. Two minutes, two, minutes. two minutes to go now in the first half. And the season's very and Matt a little smaller. They're crashing the boards, and that hurts him going the other way because St. Mary's is getting the early entry down the floor and some easy opportunities for some deuces. At halftime, Gene will be speaking with the parents of Danny and Rashad Green. Savory so now one of, ten, one of 12 from the three-point line. One of 12 is the difference in the game. So when you see that here, St. Mary's always looking to run. And this time, Gerard Fitz with authority, a crowd pleaser here at Connor Sutter Arena. 29-19 the score, St. Mary's with the lead and the basketball, 140 to go in the first half. Look at just Danny's dad speaking with Gene. Mrs. Green had more sense and decided, if I go speak with Gene Gold, I'll just stay home and watch the game on TV. <laughs> Gerard Fitz has six. 31-19 is the score. At any rate, Gene will be speaking with Danny Green's dad, who will also have a conversation with Kevin Boyle, the head coach of the Celtics of St. Patrick's. One of the top five teams in the MSG poll. zavone has got to find a way to sell this game, Matt. He was getting away from him in a hurry. Fitz is laying won't go. Tim Hepworth with the rebound. Marshall very much to sell. Get a good shot here. You're only down by 12. But good defense by Danny Green and long pass ahead for Fitz. Back for Rashad Green in the way in. We see all Green show right here. Danny. So his little brother Rashad creating offense with their defense. So a 14 point advantage. And there was an opportunity for Zaverian to get within 10, maybe 9 with a 3. Instead, good defense and a poor decision on the part of field. The turnover results in a basket and a bigger lead. 8-2 run by St. Mary's to close out this first half. Big Stevens blocked away by Green. Uh, he averages 4 blocks a game. That's a mismatch right there. And coming into his territory, Danny Green, watch him, times it perfectly, no contact, send it back. Just a pleasure to watch, because they do everything. Saquon Stone just in off the bench scores. Back in the game is Stone, he is the leading scorer in the ball game through the Clippers. Here's Montavo with the pretty move and the jumper. Falling to the floor is Phil Montalvo. And on that note, St. Mary's will take a 14-point lead with them into the locker room. So again, it started out slowly for both teams. Severian had an early lead, but it was all St. Mary's from about the midway point of the first quarter. Tim Close's team enjoying a 14-point advantage at the break. Plenty still to come here during our halftime presentation. Danny Green's dad, a chat with Kevin Boyle, highlights and stats and all that. We're back at the second annual Tom Crotty Memorial Classic and the first game of our live doubleheader. It's halftime right now in St. Mary's from Long Island showing why they, they are the number one team in the Tri-State, leading by 14 over Zavarian. And that's due in large part to the play of both sons of this guy to my left, Danny Green Sr., son Danny and Rashad play for St. Mary's. And Danny, it's just got to be an absolute thrill as a parent. Can I have one kid out there, but both of your, both of your sons out there? Yeah, it's very exciting to have both of them play together. It's Danny's senior year, and I was glad that him and Rashad was able to get on the court and do the things that they've done. But I've never thought in a million years they've accomplished things they've accomplished to this far. Well, Danny is headed off to North Carolina. And, and, and what does that mean to you and, and your wife? Uh, it's a very exciting moment for the whole family, for the community. Everybody's been very supportive. Coaches, Coach Cruz in St. Mary's, and everybody in North Babylon, and the community where we're from. Everybody's very excited about it going to North Carolina. I have to be honest, you look like you could actually still play the high school game right now. You played your ball in North Babylon. I want to know, where did Danny get his game? From his dad. Yeah, from his dad. Got his game from his dad. He's better than me down there. 
Yeah. And, and what's what's it like between the two brothers out there, both on and off the court? Uh, they're very competitive. They're very competitive off the court and on the court, but at the same time, they're very close. And they have a little brother also, Devonte, and another newborn who's just born, Devonte Green. And they're all close. We're close in the family. I need to know: Are you guys ready to start making those trips down south? Yes, we are. Well, well, thank you for your time. That's Danny Green Sr. here. We had halftime of the first game of our doubleheader, St. Mary's and Zavarian, and St. Mary's up right now by 14 points. We'll be back. On University, at the half, St. Mary's leads Zavarian by a score of 35 to 21. This is the second annual Tom Crotty Boys Memorial Classic, and uh, the money going to raise a scholarship for Tom, who lost his life in the 9-11 tragedy, and uh, was a huge basketball guy, and uh, these teams have to support that effort, and what we've seen, Jimmy Cavallo, is the fact that this St. Mary's team is living up to its billing as the number one team in the area. Yeah, when you're number one, you're solid in all facets of the game, and that's just what St. Mary's has shown us. They have kind of forced the variant into shooting 22%, really one of 13 from three, and five of 35 overall. And it's been St. Mary's defense. And then they turn that defense into offense. And it's pretty much been a St. Mary's highlight show for this entire first half. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Hey, the franchise. North Carolina bound Danny Green with a ball fake. Look at him take it to the rim with authority. It all starts with their defense, though, in Gale Country. Who's Danny's little brother? That's Rashad Green. Look at Rashad going to the floor right there. Coming up with a turnover. Finds Tyrell Hanson. Hanson finishes and leads everybody with 14 points. And if you think Rashad Green can only play defense, think again. Look at Green. Montavo, cross-court pass. Can't let that happen. And Rashad spots up and knocks it down. And finally, Gerard Fitz. Fitz with five points in the first half. You see, once again, St. Mary's battling. Then the quick outlet pass. Fitz beats everybody down the floor. And St. Mary's has a 14-point lead. And we take a look at the statistics in that 8 for 35 overall and field goal percentage by Zavarian. Clearly something that'll have to change, but the outside shot's not falling. The zone's packing in for St. Mary's, and until they start draining some of the outside shots, one for 13 from three, as you mentioned, Jimmy, hey, uh, things won't change much. We see it all the time in the NCAA tournament. Doesn't matter what level of basketball you are. If you're the underdog, you got to shoot the three ball with a good percentage. Not a great percentage, just a good. And one of 13, that's troubling for Zavella, and they'll do better than that in the second half. But it's tough. I mean, you've taken on the number one team in the Tri-State, the Gales of St. Mary's. It takes a lot to knock this team off. Tyler Hansen with 14 points to lead all scorers on 6 of 11 from the floor. He also threw in three rebounds. And we talked about the balance that the St. Mary's team has. And imagine, if you will, you've got a player of the caliber of a Danny Green headed to one of the premier programs in the country at North Carolina. And yet... He's not stood up. Now he draws a lot of attention. It's like in football. If you lead the league in sacks as a defensive end, you get that double team, and the guy on the other side, the other defensive end, all of a sudden he finds some room to work with. So St. Mary's, they can really spread it around. Now Danny Green, in fact, with just two points, but in the team-oriented approach of St. Mary's, it's all good. Their team is up 35 to 21. Zavarian with the ball. Jake Stevens, now Tim Hepworth. Hepworth wearing number five, Zavarian, the Clippers in the white jerseys with the black and gold trim. The jump shot canned by Brian McKenzie. McKenzie with four. Well, that'll help the percentage here in the second half. 100% so far, one for one. Now, one thing we haven't spoken about, Matt, don't think you know, that St. Mary's doesn't have a good memory. This is the team Zavarian that knocked them out last year. Uh, in the play-in game for the New York State playoffs. Tyrone Hansen stays hot from long range. His third three-pointer, he now has 17. You know, Tyrone is on his way to a career high. So St. Mary's knocked out last year by Zavarian. Zavarian will go on to lose to St. Raymond's. Who eventually will lose to Mount Vernon. Stevens was open for a moment. Hepworth is for three, no. Again, the long-range jumper's not going for Zavarian. Stevens tried to go to the hoop. His path was blocked by Hansen. Here's Stone inside and counted. 
Well, it was scored by Saquon Stone. Saquon Stone now with 14, and he has really had a terrific game for the Clippers. You've got to like what you see out of Saquon Stone. Look at him gather himself, just composure. Then he goes strong. He knows Danny Green is there. And a little adjustment there. He switches it back to the right hand to create a little space between him and Green. Very impressive. Danny Green with his second personal. Stone completes the three-point play. He has 15 points. It's 38-26. St. Mary's on top. Danny Green tries to answer. Can't. The follow, though, by Hanson will send him to the line. Nobody put a body on uh, number 23, Tyrone Hanson. And Hanson with a clear path to the basket. And you can see some frustration by the Clippers talking to each other. Can't let a guy come from 20 feet out to get an offensive rebound uncontested. You see Jack Alisi in his 11th year. He's been around long enough to know that. You know, more distressing news for Jack Alisi. LeVance Fields, his leading scorer, his three-year starter, his pit-bound senior, has picked up three personal fouls. But at this point, uh, Coach Alisi has no choice but to keep his player in there. His team's down by 14. For three, that's Fields, and that's why he'll keep him in there. He's capable of exploding quickly. Second three-pointer for Fields, he has 10. Again, we mentioned in the first half, four consecutive 30-plus efforts for LeVance Fields. And the ball taken away by Stevens. Fast break. It's Fields with Pauline back blocked by Danny Green. There's a collision underneath the basket. Players shake it up particularly advanced fields. Fields ran into our cameraman. Green went tumbling to the floor. He's none the worse for, uh, for wear. I mean, look at the hustle by Danny Green, though. You know, you're not going to give me layoffs while he's on the floor. And just great reaction. Everybody looks to be okay. And you know, it looks like he got hurt before he hit the camera. He might have, I think he hit the support of the basket, then into the cameraman. Nevertheless, an outstanding defensive play by Green. Prevents a layup. Off the break, here's Fields. One more try. And oh, the follow by Stone won't go. It's been that kind of a game for Zavarian. Now Danny Green's lay-in won't go. All tapped around. Green with it. And it falls. Just staying after it, Danny Green. These rims have denied a couple chippies on me for both these teams. And Green, quick hops there, first to the ball, offensive rebound and an easy put back. Four for Green, a 13 point St. Mary's advantage, 457 to go in the third. Fields' his jumper won't go. Stone with the rebound, they'll set it up once again. Here's Steven, Steven's doing a great job in the classroom, 1180 on the SAT. Good ball movement, good passing. Blocked by Green as Fields is alone underneath the basket, but Green comes up with a block. That's his fourth of the ball game. And Danny Green is going to make it run of the triple double the hard way with the block, so he's going to feel for the come back to action. Good strong work inside. Five points in this quarter, 12 in the ball game for Fields. Well, Zavarian sticking close there with Green striking distance, still trailing though, down by 11, 42-31. I see LeVance able to rebound, even that six foot in there. It was a tough kid. Montavo, cross court pass, Green has it knocked away, good quick hands by Zavarian. Green is fouled and will go to the line for two. Danny Green just a great seal off. He was calling for the ball. He had his man backed off. This is his second personal. Three teams on the Now Danny to the line. Danny the MVP of the Beach Ball Classic earlier. Of course, St. Mary's won the tournament. For St. Mary's, Tyson Johnson and Gerard Fitz are back in the game. One thing that has impressed his head coach, he's become a leader off the court, too, for these guys. Hey, it's his senior year, he'd like to ring up a title. <laughs> 2002, the last title for Tim Cruz beat Amityville. 44-31. It's 44-31. <laughs> The score is Green connects on both. A 13 point advantage for St. Mary's. Now, Tyler, I'm talking about 
course of Federation title. I mean, they own the Long Island Catholic League seven times defending Long Island Catholic League champs. Seven in a row. McKenzie's long range jumper won't go. Ball knocked away from Fitz, who's come in. He gathers in and gives it to Montalvo. Green triple team blocked by Stone. Out of bounds, last touch by Danny Green. And the ball goes over to St. Mary's. The Gales lead by 13. Looking to maintain a number one position in the MSG poll. Quiet in terms of scoring, but six rebounds and five blocks. Jimmy Cavallo, truly an all-around talent. Hey, his game today has been defense, man. You see the block shots. He's doing an outstanding job rebounding the basketball. He's made numerous outlet passes. It's just another dimension of his greatness. He doesn't have to score for, to have a part in dominating the game. Floating banker by LeVance Fields. He's come alive now, has Fields. Seven points in this quarter, 14 in the game. And he's helped keep Severian close off the turnover, but a ball thrown away by the Clippers. And those are the kind of mistakes you just can't afford to make when you're trying to mount a comeback and a bit of a pained expression on Jack Alisi's face. Right, Jack defending Brooklyn Queens champ, second time in four years for the Clippers. 2-3 look by Zaverian defensively off the inbound. Gary Montavo just runs some clock. And Green says, we've run enough. I'll take the long range shot. Stone with the rebound. Saquon Stone has played very well today. Here's Fields, he can get hot quickly. The long range jumper won't go. Tight for the rebound and a foul called on the play. It's gonna be on Stone over the back, but you know what I'll tell you. Fairfield is interested in Stone, LaSalle JMU. If I was Fairfield, I would be waiting at the door for Saquon Stone because he just gets involved for Jack Alise's Clippers on both ends of the floor. He's active, he's quick, he's fearless. He's just a ball player. And as you see Fields, a little banged up in this game. Noticeable kind of limp coming off the floor. He'll get a little bit of a breather. That's 2.22 here, so we're going to the fourth quarter maybe with those three fouls. Green off the drive, easy drive and hoop for Danny Green. Just takes what they give you, man. Terrific first step, quick to the hoop. Tyson Johnson on the floor, tying up Ryan McKenzie. And yeah, McKenzie, good hustle right there, going to the floor. And Green with that lightning quick first step. Watch Gill. And before you even know it, he's by you, Matt. You see the Clippers right there? Just let them standing. Danny Green. Possession arrow favored St. Mary's. That's why they have the ball. Offensive foul called on Tyson Johnson, his third. Offensive foul. Good position that time by Stone. That is his third offensive foul. And you can see why, even though LeVance Fields gets a lot of the publicity for the Clippers and leads them in scoring in all 30 point games. Jack Alici said Saquon Stone is the heart and soul of this club. Johnson goes to the bench with the three. Rashad Green, the junior, brother of Danny Green, back in the game. Saw a significant action in the first half. She looks right back in there now. We got a breather, a kick on Green's part, on Danny Green's part. Brother Rashad suffered an injury earlier in the year on a dunk try. It was a spectacular effort, just came down awkwardly on someone beneath him. And has uh, just recently come back to the lineup, still trying to find his way, find his rhythm. This is Jamal Nixon, number one now, Jake Stevens. Head and shoulder fake and the dish, gets it back. Approaching a minute to play here in the third quarter, St. Mary's leading by 13, but Severian with the ball. Shot clock now down to eight. Nixon for three, he's got it. Saval Nixon, the sophomore from long range. And Severian stays within striking distance. 46-36 the score, need a stop here. And so St. Mary's goes to Danny Green and why not? An amazing move there by Danny Green. Looked like he was gonna go up and under for a second, man. Then the last second. 
Watch this here. Go strong baseline. I think he's going to swoop through Dr. J style and then just puts it back up over his head and finds the glass. Players like Danny Green make the game look easy. That was not an easy shot right there. His body was under the rim. And then he extended his hands back up and over to put it off the window. Tyron Hansen off the ball was shaken up on the play. He's been replaced by Gerard Fitz for St. Mary's. Corey Nako wearing number 24 as a variant has come into the game. First action that Nako has seen. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Well, St. Mary's give up the three, and what do they do? They went right back to Danny Green, give themselves some room. Leading by 12. It's a good matchup there for Fields going against a smaller Montavo, but he gives it up. Nixon, who was feeling it, missed the three, and now it's St. Mary's with the ball, and they'll set up for one last shot. Leading by 12. The league Pauline, my favorite TV show, Max Preps High School Weekly. In the game now for St. Mary's. Danny Green gets the pass from his brother. The lay-in won't go. But Green will go to the line for two. Right now, guys. Here we go. Two brothers getting together as they'll have probably so many times on the drive of a little two-man game right there. And we saw Danny Green's dad with Gene Gold at the half. Can you imagine the battles those two have had on the drive where the kids growing up trying to get the better of dad who was a great player in his own day. And then as the dad had a mention, he had to, hey, he had to, he had to be honest. He said, Danny's a little better than me now. <laughs> that's what, and usually that's when the father stopped playing in the driveway with the children. Right? Well, he, when they're beaten, that's it, it's over. And you know that's where these kids develop their toughness and their defensive style. See Danny once again. You're trying to stop dad for your whole adolescent life. You become a defensive player. And then all of a sudden you get out there against guys your age, your size. You say, hey, I, can, I got some offense too. My, they're not as big as my dad. 14 point lead at the break for St. Mary's. 14 points is the lead after three. The final eight after this campus of St. John's University. This is the second annual Tom Crotty Memorial Basketball Classic. Money raised to go to a scholarship in Tom's name uh, given to a player at Marist College where Tom graduated. Tom was a victim of September 11th. A managing director at Sandler O'Neill. He perished on that terrible day. These schools also affected greatly. You see the long Long list of Zavarian alums who passed away on that day, murdered on September 11, 2001. St. Mary's also affected a large list of alums perishing on that day. And Tom Crotty, one of those who died and for whom uh, this tournament has been named. And as Gene Gold detailed at the beginning of our coverage, a scholarship raised and given to a player who, male or female, makes Marist as a walk-on. And that's what Tom did. He made Marist as a walk-on by his second year he earned a scholarship. Uh, and so they remember his contributions there. And just a wonderful, wonderful event. It's just a great job by the, the outstanding people have hope through hoops. I mean, they're on a mission to benefit young people through educational and philanthropic endeavors. And, they just do a great job. Hope through hoops. Another great event. Tom Crotty played for Maria Regina High School, and his head coach uh, is here, and we'll be speaking with Gene in just a little bit. Off the drive, the blocking foul is called. No basket. The basket is waved off. Foul, with foul called on Rashad Green, first. his first. Teams Jamal Nixon will inbound. The sophomore looking for someone, looking. Finally gets it out to Fields, but not before it's knocked away by Pauline. Ali Pauline knocking it away. Now with the basketball. Quickly ahead it goes. Danny Green travels before he dishes to his brother Rashad. Good work there by Ali Pauline. That's Danny Green. Showing a little bit of his human side on the basketball court with the turnover. With some steps, checking in Timmy Hepworth. And his brother Dennis on this squad, another one of the many Staten Islanders who come over to play for Jack Alessi. Of course, uh, the king of Staten Island basketball, more Catholics, Kyle McElhaney, one that got away for Jack. Kyle, all time leading scorer in Staten Island history. 
Time not the ally of as a very good hands by Montava who knocks the ball away from Fields. Tyrone Hansen leading all scores with 19 points for St. Mary's. Saquon Stone has 15 to pace Zaverian. Fields with the dish for Hepworth. Now setting the screen. Here's Nixon. Little rotation. Shot clock down to one. Long jumper, no. Tapped around, and we get a rebounding foul called on Levance Fields, and that'll be number four. Just a tough call to go against him on a long desperation three as the shot clock was winding down. And Jack says, I can't believe you called that one. And I gotta agree on that one. That was a, a bit of an over efficient call right there. Sixth team foul on Zaveri and Montavo in deep finds Danny Green. He can't buy the layup. Zaveri looking to run. Here's Fields. So you see Danny Green pestering, double teaming. And gets a jump ball out of it. And the ball will go to St. Mary's. So now you can see why uh, Roy Williams is happy to have Danny Green coming to Tar Heel country next year. Yeah, he missed the layup, and when great players miss a chip, you know, they don't stand there and kind of pout and get mad. They try and get the ball back, and Danny just kind of stalked the ball carrier there and caused the turnover. So St. Mary's Matt now in no hurry now. Now we'll take some of the air out, absolutely. The three, nailed by Tyson Johnson. Johnson now with six. His points coming on a pair of threes. It's another multi-dimensional player, plays so many positions, so many range right there. And this one's getting away from the Clippers. At 17 points, it's the largest lead of the ball game. Just a wonderful brand of defense played by St. Mary's today. And you see a, uh, an example there. Good hands, making for a difficult try on the part of Jake Stevens. The shot really with the defense that time in a block. Oh, he gets it back for the lay in. What a pass by Ty Johnson, though. Just a quick reaction back pass. And a timeout called by Zaveria. 14 points now for Danny Green. 12 of them coming in the second half. And coming to the way first, the block on one end with Shaw Green. And watch the gas. Right away, they're breaking the transition. They want to get the numbers. They establish the numbers. And watch the quick pass here. Bang, right there. Don't catch it and throw it. Just bang it right back to him. And the finisher, one of the best in the nation, Danny Green. Who can do a little bit of everything. Outside shooting, inside play. A, a multi-talented young man. Attention Duke, here comes Carolina bound Danny Green and he can do it all. Shooting, yes sir. How about the power game inside? Look at this spin move to the rack. Uh, they're gonna be loving it in North Carolina next year. And then of course, look at the look. Passing makes everybody better on the floor. Do you think defense? Oh my, Danny Green, the whole package. And the Christ, the Kings and the, all the big time clubs. Now Vernon's to boot, I mean, it is no easy task. Now Green hopes to lead St. Mary's to that promised land. And uh, today with the 14 points, the seven boards, the six blocks, showing his all-around play. Four forty-five to go in the fourth quarter. Jake Stevens shot well short, right into the hands of Green, the long outlet. Tyson Johnson is fouled by Stone. And Saquon Stone picks up his third personal foul. That is his third. Yeah, Stoney doing his best not to pick it up, but fall for it. <laughs> and that's a picture worth a thousand words in this game. Yeah, when you're picking the lint off the sweater vest in the fourth quarter, it's, uh, it's not a good sign. You know, you come in taking on MSG's number one team, St. Mary's, arguably the top team in the Tri-State, and you know, you got to play well, and Zavarian did not play well tonight, and so this is what's going to happen, but they will live to see another day, you know, come out battling in the tough division. Let's face it, they play the toughest basketball division in America, 
New York City Catholic League, Class AA, you're talking about the Rice, the Christ of Kings, the St. Raymonds of the world. Never, never an easy night. No nights off in that league. And that is what uh, Jack Alisi thought might have played a bit into Zavarian's favor. The fact that their competition is so strong night in and night out. Levance Fields with his third three-pointer. He's got 17. But he said we have to play a perfect game. St. Mary's is that good. We have to play a perfect game. Clearly tonight they did not. Thus the score the way it is. And that's what is most disappointing, I'm sure, to Coach Alisi. Yeah, not so much they didn't play perfectly, but that they just did not play better. Count the basket as green on the drive. We'll go to the line to complete the conventional three-point play. And how can I talk about the New York Catholic League Class AA? Did I mention your favorite club, Matt? Of course, Bishop Lachlan. That's right. No relation, although we may do some more research into the family. There's Danny to the free throw line and count it. Five in this quarter, 17 in the game for Danny Green. 60 to 39 is the score. And we'll see uh, the coaches start to go to the benches. The way the goaltending is the call. Saquon Stone credited with the basket, his 17th point of the game. We're going to take a short timeout. 3.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. St. Mary's with the lead over Zavarian. Memorial Classic, and I'm with Tom's former high school coach and Maria Regina High School, Bill Donlin. And Bill, we want to know, what type of player was Tom? You know what? He was a very intense, he was a terrific player. Uh, he epitomized everything that every coaches look for. And he selected players on the team. He had a great passion for the game. He stepped in between the lines. He always gave you 100%. Uh, he was a two-year starter for me at Maria Regina. Uh, he was, he was a, a senior year, and he was team captain, and he was honored by the Calder School coaches, Nassau, Suffolk County, by making all first team Catholic League. He was a great player, and uh, uh, when he graduated from Virginia in 1977, he went on and played, he was a four-year letterman at Marist College. And in honor of, of what happened at, uh, you know, 9-11-2001, uh, there was a scholarship in his name uh, for any deserving male or female student athlete on Long Island in the name of Tom Crotty. And that is really his legacy. This tournament is, is uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity uh, you know, for high school teams to come in here, perform in front of college coaches, you know, in terms of the notoriety and publicity. But in terms of Tom Crotty and his, uh, and his wife, Joanne, and his two beautiful daughters, and his entire Crotty, Crotty family, they were just terrific people. I'm sure they thank you for being here. You traveled a long way, all the way from Illinois to be here. We thank you for your time, and I'm glad that you're enjoying these games. Well, uh, I certainly appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, back to the game, guys. Gene, thanks very much. Uh, man who had a great impact on those who knew him, Tom Crotty, and thus this second annual Tom Crotty Boys Memorial Classic. Under three minutes to play in this ball game. It is uh, in the back pocket of the St. Mary's Gales. Rashad Green has the ball knocked away from behind. Off the scramble. A tie-up. And the ball will go over to Zavari. Well, Tyson Johnson during the interview had, oh, one of those highlight moves, Jimmy. Wow. Talk about elevation. And the crowd was loving it here at Conesucker Arena. And you expect to see some of that when New York's finest from a high school basketball standpoint, come out here and play. Johnson then subsequently fouled out, leaving the ball game with 12 for the game. When he left in a blaze of glory. Rashad Green looks to his brother, takes it himself. Another adjustment, took a little contact, went up with the left hand. Smooth, smooth players. The Green brothers. And you see Johnson getting out of the office for him. He's a very... Getting it from a great player, Danny Green, you know, all the hype. And Zavarian had one there, did too. Of course, Chris Mullen. Former Zavarian player, not a president of the Golden State Warriors. And we talked to Jack Lucy about Zavarian and the great Clippers of all time. And of course, the name Chris Mullen comes right up. And of course, Chris Taft. And we talk about LeVance Fields going on to Pittsburgh. Chris Taft. Former Zavarian Clipper now having a great career at Pitt. 
Also, Sean wins of the world at Boston University, a captain now, Carlton Screen, formerly of Providence. So they've had some prime timers. So with the win today, St. Mary's will improve to 15 and 0 and maintain their position in the number one spot, Jimmy. Uh, numero uno on top of the world. And Jack Lucy was trying to make some ground up here as he sits on the bubble. Uh, knocking off number one, you see the top ten. Look at all the New York teams in there. St. Mary's, Rice, Christ the King, St. Anthony's out of Jersey. St. Patrick's, we'll see them tonight out of New Jersey. And now Vernon down there. We're checking in at number nine. Those are the records as of last January 25th, or this past January 25th, because the records of last January 25th. You'd be wondering when the poll gets updated. Was it over a year old? But nonetheless, uh, that's why the difference in the record, St. Mary's will have won two games since the poll last came out. Eric Pauline has uh, been substituted for. I said Tyson Johnson had five fouls. He had only four fouls. So he's back in the ball game. You know, one thing St. Mary's has done, Matt, to solidify their place on top of the field, they've played a great schedule. And of course, Mike Quick, that is his number one criteria when he makes his polls in football and basketball. He doesn't really care what your record is, as he should. He wants to know what kind of competition are you playing. And St. Mary's with the major teams, Christ the Kings, Patterson Catholic, St. Raymond's, Lincoln, Simon Gratz out of Philly, going down to the Beach Ball Classic. They've taken on a lot of clubs. Foul inside here. Tyron Hanson, but give that foul there. Number 20, number 32 there. Brian McKenzie. McKenzie, great story. Really emerging player in this league, but just a dynamic student. Top 2% of the school. He's a very and a member of the International Baccalaureate Program. That only goes to the elite of elite. And you talk about honor students, you see Brian talking to Coach Jack Felici. And we have high hopes for him, a 6'3 junior. Coming off a couple 15 point games, getting better, but what a great job. Top 2% in the school in the honors classes. Getting it done in the classroom, Brian McKenzie. Sixty-six forty-four. the score. Stone had a shot partially blocked. Approaching one minute to play. Rashad Green can't buy the hoop. Hepworth with the rebound. Well, Rashad Green is, he loves playing with his brother Matt this year, but we'll be glad to see him go because he's going to go in a lot of attention next year. He's got quite a game himself. <laughs> Fouls it up. Mm -hmm. High up. Loose ball. And he gets the roll. That's the kind of guys you want, Matt. Guys who, when a game is over, said and done, are still just fighting. I mean, you sure it was Shaw Green like that. That's the ball player in there. Doesn't know how to play any other way. You know, as you see the reserves making their way to St. Mary's. They improved to 15 and 0. What a fine day for the girls. Danny Green and company. So substitutions made by Tim Cruz. And James Butler, number two. There's McKenzie with a long range jumper. James Wootloo coming in, wearing number two. This is Rudy Fuertes. Also out on the floor is Gerard Fitz, who has seen action throughout the game, and Alik Pauline. And as you saw Tim Cruz a moment ago, coaching his reserves right there, barking out the hands, talking to the guys, and just an outstanding coach is Tim Cruz. And then those reserves, no, hey, they're in there for just a few seconds. These are an integral part of the team, these guys. These are the guys that got to work hard and practice, make things tough on these primetime starters. And also getting some time, Brandon Mays. Dennis Hepworth had a shot there for Severian as time runs out. Good, strong performance. Pretty much from start to finish for St. Mary's. Some Sloppy moments early on, but basically they took over control midway through the first quarter 
and we're never headed as they roll to an easy 70 to 47 victory over Zavarian. Danny Green just one of these standouts uh, on a team of standouts for St. Mary's. Okay, you talk about a team and you talk about all the contributions they got from different players tonight. Tyrone Hanson's Tyrone Johnson, Danny Green, his brother Rashad Green. I was most impressed with their defensive efforts tonight, Matt. They get after blocking shots, rebounding, and that always seems to jumpstart their offense. When it's all said and done, if you're not shooting well, you can always go back to your defense at St. Mary's. Rock solid team, all five positions. Tim Cruz is the head coach of the Gales. He's standing by with Gene Goldberg. Thanks, Matt. Tim, you have to say just a total, complete team effort in this one. Yeah, I thought we played a very good team game. Uh, team defense was the key in the game for us. We moved the ball well. In the beginning, I think we were a little flat, a little passive, and we kind of woke up and I thought we played a lot better. Well, Levance Fields got his points in this game, but didn't do that type of damage that, you know, that he normally does. I mean, he was came into this game scoring over 30 points in his last four games, but he didn't do that type of damage against your team. Well, we felt he had to work for all his shots today, so he never got on those quick eight, ten-point runs that he can get for himself. But that helped us a lot that we limit him to a basket here, a basket there. Yeah, they add up. He's going to score because he's a really great player, but it really worked out well for us today. Well, the team keeps rolling along. You're still undefeated, and you've played a very difficult schedule this year. Is that to ready the team for the playoffs? That's the idea behind is that we're going to be used to this level of competition and hopefully when we get there, we'll respond to it a little better than we have in the past and just be a little more relaxed in that environment. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Congratulations on the win. 70-47, to 47, St. Mary's beat Severian here on the campus of St. John's University in Lucarnasek Arena. The second annual Tom Crotty Classic will be back right after this.